In a never-ending sea of consecutive speculation, two questions always keep popping into mind. That being, who are we and why are we here? You must consider to answer such a question, we must first arrive at the answer as to why we humans exist. And the answer to that will not be an agreeable answer in the grand scheme, but we can at least sleep a little better having asked such things. To trace back the answer to such questions, we must also trace back the history of our civilization. Whether or not this process brings about a satisfactory answer or not is anyone's best guess. But we are sworn to share whatever answers we find with our viewers. So, wait till you hear this. On the island of Bet Dwarka, pottery and sculptures have been found that are dating to 2,000 years before Jesus Christ. These things are from a time that was after the before time, yet still before modern time. Somewhat a conundrum when considering history which is lost to us. When we look at the horizon at Dwarka, and indeed from Bet Dwarka, we are confronted with an image that is seemingly timeless. A literal sea of water where no obvious signs of a civilization are present other than the modern influence. Yet, underneath all the water we have sitting waiting to be discovered, the oldest civilization ever discovered on planet Earth. It is literally mind-boggling. Dwarka is one of the best studied underwater discoveries in India's Gulf of Cambay. It's still a thriving city today, but marine archaeologists have been studying its ancient underwater ruins for decades. According to ancient Hindu text, Dwarka was a beautiful, prosperous city founded by the god Krishna. Dwarka was destroyed when the evil king Salva attacked with a flying machine, Vimana, and it sank into the sea when Krishna left. During ancient times, including when Plato lived, frequent tectonic activity caused massive earthquakes, floods, and other catastrophic events that might explain why so many cities vanished underwater. Many of these sunken cities are shrouded in myths and legends, but were those legends simply based on the geological events? Those who favor a more transcendental or metaphysical explanation suggest there is some kind of divine intervention at work, and these destroyed civilizations were paying the price of their immortal deeds. Regardless of why these cities around the globe slipped underwater, they are fascinating windows into the history of our lost civilizations. The whole area of Sunken Dwarka is not a small area, it is vast and still being rediscovered to this day despite restrictions on the exploration of such a site. According to ancient explorer Amish Shah, the local people appear completely oblivious to what is on their doorstep. Of course, that being the oldest civilization on the planet that we know of. Yet the people that still live here today have not traditionally learnt of such epic historical periods that are sitting on their doorstep. Interestingly, to dive on this site would definitely reveal more even for such a small stint, but this is all completely banned and being monitored by both the Coast Guard of India and armed troops on shore. Crazy, right? The Mahabharata epic poem describes a fascinating city called Dwarka, the dwelling place of Lord Krishna. This is the site of the lost city of Krishna, and guess what? Nobody seems to know about it. Yet, one of the biggest religions on the planet is describing this place, and it is sitting right under the noses of the masses. The Mahabharata epic is describing the largest war ever fought on Earth in such a short period of time, killing over 4 million participants in two weeks. The weapons used at this epic event is not known, but it is said to be charged with all the power in the universe, suggesting that this was an unknown weapon and one of mass destruction, and this was said to have taken place close to Dwarka. Hindus have no doubt that the deity with this tribe traveled from Mathria in North India to build a new kingdom of gold in Dwarka. The devotees, some among them historians, believe that after Krishna's death, a great flood washed away the city. The date of the event is not clear, but to find the truth of the city, the government is pressing into service underwater robots. Yup, you heard that correctly. The modern version of Dwarka is at the opening of the Gamti River on the Arabian Sea and located close to the famous Dwarka Dehesh temple. Every year during the birth anniversary of Krishna, thousands of devotees from all over the world converge on the city. The Department of Science and Technology is actively considering entrusting a mission to robotic vehicles that will go down into the sea near Dwarka to look for the fabled city and collect information. 
The program would involve organizations such as the National Institute of Ocean Technology, Chennai, and the National Institute of Oceanography, NIO, Goa. The Chennai Institute has already built robotic vehicles that can withstand the massive pressure of 5,000 meters deep underwater and function. The NIO2 has previous experience in marine archaeology. Excavations at Dwarka have been going on for some time now. Nearly a decade ago, the underwater archaeology wing of the Archaeological Survey of India discovered copper coins and fragments of granite structures. In the process of the hope for discovery, the explorers also expects to test several technologies such as underwater imaging, the mapping of the ocean floor with sonar waves, and dating of old stones and implements. The first excavations at Dwarka were supervised by Deccan College Pune and the Department of Archaeology, the government of Gujarat in 1963, under the direction of H.D. Sankalia. Over the years, it has thrown up pottery that suggests that the city could be 3,000 years old. The Modi government seriously believes that many things mentioned, like flying machines and versions of in vitro fertilization, IVF, in ancient texts like Mahabharat and Ramayana are for real, and the Indian civilization was very advanced then. The underwater robotic expedition is in keeping with that belief. In case evidence is found for the existence of Dwarka, it would be a great boost to the BJP-led government. They would have historical basis to the idea of Hindu myths and their professional faith in things ancient. The quest to prove the historicity of the epics by dating them affirmatively is an old pursuit. It is also a politically fraught subject that has been making recurrent headlines. Generations of researchers have combined the study of the two texts with data from astronomy, archaeology, and paleogeography. The field has been widened to include genetic studies and natural sciences, but too little or no avail. We are far from any unanimous agreement except for concurring that the Vedas predate the Ramayana, which came before the Mahabharata. And what about astronomical anomalies that are seemingly linked to such things taking place on Earth? Stay tuned for our next episode coming along just shortly. As always, thank you for watching.